Hey, what's up gang? Jackson Galaxy here, your cat daddy. And today we're going to take a letter from one of our Mojo tiers in Brooklyn, New York. This comes from June. And June says, hey Jackson, I read your books. Cool. And after picking up Catification, I brought it home and immediately got to work for my cat, Bug. After reading the section on scent soakers, I immediately went out and ordered four different types of beds for Bug. He has yet to use one of them. Three exclamation points. Jackson, I do not make that much money, but I love my little Bug. What do I do to get him to use his four new beds? Three exclamation points. <laughs> And that comes again from June in Brooklyn. Well, first of all, I love the fact that you love your bug so much and that you've done so much for him to catify your space. I just want to give you all the props in the world. June, I'm just giving you so many props right now because no matter what, catifying is good. Scent soakers are good and bug will appreciate it in the long run. I get it. This is sort of this universal thing with cats. In fact, we make jokes about it, right? I just paid 300 bucks for a unbelievable four story handmade cat tree from some artisan in the depths of Romania and my cat's sleeping in the box that it came in, right? And we get all mad about that. And we wind up keeping the box around the house so that the cat will sleep in it. And then of course he abandons that <laughs> about a month later. It's a real setup for frustration, so I'm glad you asked me. I get it, man. I, I, I get your frustration. There's not a lot of disposable income to go around these days. And, and I just really honor you uh, for putting your hard-earned cash into your little friend here. So let me see what I can do to help you here. Now, of course, I haven't been to your home. I don't know about these four beds, nor do I know about Bug. I don't know how old he is. I don't know what his preferences are. So I'm gonna be as wide as I possibly can, and you can take what I give you and run with it. The first reason why your cat might not use his bed is texture. Now, I love the fact that you got four beds, and I'm hoping that you explored different textures. So whether they be fleece, whether they be more of just a flat surface that's a little colder, because it could be hot where you are, so a little bit of cold would, would go a long way. Uh, whether it's almost an astroturfy feel. I know that for us, we look at these things and we go, why would my cat like this? But if you've ever seen your cat lying on top of a horizontal scratcher, on top of corrugated cardboard, choosing the cement outside versus their bed, you know the texture plays into it. As I've mentioned in Catification, in Catify to Satisfy, actually in Total Cat Mojo also, a lot of this is trial and error. Getting to know you, getting to know all about you, getting to know you, getting to know all about you. Anyway, getting to know somebody whether they've got four legs or two, takes a little bit of trial and error. Let's say that you just started dating somebody and this is the first time that they've ever come to your home and you cook them a little dinner. You don't know whether they are kosher, gluten-free, vegan, the opposite, carnivorous, spicy food, bland food, etc. You know where I'm going. You're gonna find out, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Whether you get a second date or not, I, I don't know, but you're gonna find out. And of course you can ask, and that's the one thing that you can't do with your cat. You can't say, hey bug, do you like fleece? You know, the way you do that is you get some fleece. So my suggestion is that when you first dive in to the catifying of beds and scent soakers is go very inexpensive. Go for the texture, and, and, and don't go by the aesthetics, just go for the cheapest, because that way you're getting to know Bug, getting to know all about Bug June, and you don't have to have that sort of pocketbook resentment because Bug won't use it. Now, of course, that's just one reason, but there you go. There's one reason, texture. The second, shape. And we've seen cats reject litter boxes because of their shape before. Uh, you get a round box, they don't like round. You get the hood, they don't like the hood. How do you know? Because they avoid the litter box. Same thing with texture. They avoid the box sometimes because of the way it feels under their feet. So I would again 
as you're investing in different beds, invest in different shapes. Some like the all-encompassing bed. You've seen me talk about those beds before, uh, the ones that they can sort of hide inside, or the ones that are just totally flat, the ones that sort of conform to the top of a couch. Things like that are important to cats. Again, this is about learning preference. Just like when you're catifying your home and you're thinking about building up onto the walls. You're thinking, will my cat like going onto a shelf? Start with a shelf, one shelf. Don't go all cat super highway until you find out if your cat is a tree dweller, a bush dweller, a beach dweller. Find that out before you invest. You know, these are really great ways to make sure that you don't start harboring a resentment. The third thing, and one of the most important, location, location, location. If you really pay attention to where your cat likes to lay, one will be on the vertical axis. Do they more enjoy being on the floor? Do they more enjoy being up here, about this height? Or would they rather be on top of the fridge? In any case, try putting beds in those different areas and see if your cats respond to it. Another hint is to remember that cats are like sundials. Cats follow the sun around your home. They're always looking for that one little sunny spot. And in multiple cat homes, these tend to be the areas that are of the most social significance to your, to your cat family. And sometimes you'll see them even argue about being in that spot at that time of day. They work it out, but the best thing to do is to put beds in those sunny spots. Of course, that changes as the seasons change, but that's the great thing about beds, man. Just, you know, deal them out like a deck of cards, man. Just like, here we go. We're playing five bed Monty right about here. And that's perfectly fine. And that's how you can use these four different beds, four different locations, up and down and everywhere in between. Now, a hint about location. We have the sunny spots, we have the vertical axis. One of the things I would be careful about is if you have dogs and kids, you want to make sure that you're not putting a bed in an area that's going to be in, in competition with the other beings in the house. Your cat's just going to walk away from that. If there's something that they can own peacefully and solo, they're going to do that. Finally, the one thing I would tell you, June, is don't give up and start just changing locations when your roof springs a hole and you're just running around with a bucket as opposed to putting a few buckets down and keeping them there. And that's what I would do with the beds. Sometimes it takes cats quite a while to settle into the idea of what this new thing is. They have to try it out and then they go for it. And then sometimes they stick with it, sometimes they don't. But give them the time to learn the new facets of their territory and to embrace it. If, the, if a cat hasn't used a location in a month, Maybe? Okay, now it's time to start thinking about a different place to put it. I've known people to take a beautiful cat tree that they bought and just move it all over the house, never giving the cat any kind of a reason nor an inclination to settle on it because the next day it's gone. And don't forget, cats really want to own territory. So if you have a bed or a condo or whatever in a socially significant spot, and then a week later it's in a different spot, and then a week later it's in a different spot, they're not going to be able to embrace the ownership of that chunk of the world. Now, of course, I have advised you in the past, uh, as you establish a base camp and you move that base camp out into the rest of the house, that you do move furniture out. Just let it sit. Let it marinate in the space and let your little bug uh, marinate along with it. So there you have it, June. Again, so glad that you have invested the time, the energy, and the love behind that money in your little bug. But let it sit, look at different locations, textures, sizes, and shapes. You may only have to invest in this kind of financial heartache once, but then you're gonna know something about Bug for the rest of his or her life that will take you a long way. Cat Mojo comes from ownership of territory, and that ownership comes from the availability that you provide to that territory. So you are absolutely doing the right thing. Just hang in there and don't hang it from the ceiling, that probably wouldn't be such a hot idea, but try everything else, okay? All right, June, thanks for asking again. All my love to Brooklyn and to your little bug. Yeah. June, thank you for loving bugs so much. Wait a minute. June, 
bug, June bug, June bug.